you know, I've had my years of struggle, you know, in my past years, I've struggled and I've had to really learn to ride the motorcycle. And I've actually had to learn to take constructive criticism and I've had to learn to listen to Matt and take all the knowledge that he has <laughs> and, you know, apply it. Even though sometimes, you know, I was hard headed at first. I didn't want I wanted to do it my way. Pro Stock Bike Champion, six times over, does it again for 2022. And what does his wife do? She goes out and wins the damn event. Not only to put a cherry on top, but just to kind of uh, maybe take a little thunder away from Matt Smith by winning that event. Matt Smith and Angie Smith, both of them here in the Freak Nation. And Angie, quickly to you before we get to the champion, when you knew that Matt won the championship, was it an inspiration for you to go out there and kick some ass in that final round? Or, or was it like, man, I am so loose. I am so chill right now. Nobody can affect me. I was glad that he won the championship because that was a lot of stress going out of my life for, at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, because, you know, we win together as a team and we lose together as a team. So we're a team and uh, I just needed him to win that championship. And then when all that focus was gone and I didn't have to worry about that anymore, then it was time to focus on me winning the race. And we did it. You know, I like that when a personality, I don't care if it's a musician or a motorsports athlete, when they just recognize that you're just normal like us, you can be intimidated, uh, you can be nervous, you can be anxious. And I understand that. And getting to you, six timer, Matt Smith, Angie Smith joining us here in the Freak Nation. Once, okay, leading up to the championship, and again, it was all, all but done when it came to Pomona for all intents and purposes, but is there stress throughout the day when, uh, when, you're, when you've got that championship pretty much in your sights, Matt? Yeah, you know, there was a lot of stress, uh, but once we uh, won first round, um, we knew we had it locked down, and the main goal was to try to get Angie to win the race. So we just we we really focused on that because even coming into that race, I gave Angie the motor that was in my bike at at Vegas. We kind of swapped motors, and uh, we gave her the best motor possible for her to win the race because I felt like any of our motors could have won first round, and and that's that's kind of the the route we went. Oh, Matt, don't you drop that out there right now. You gave her the best motor in Pomona. Why don't you give her the best Pomo the best motor all season? Oh! Oh, I <laughs> well, <laughs> so, so here's the thing. She has the best motor all year long. This was a brand new motor that we built for the last three races. We had some new parts that came in. We mm -hmm. dynoed it right before we went to Dallas, and it was the best thing that we had. So I stuck it in my bike for Dallas and Vegas, but I told her, I said, if I do good at those two races, you can have her for Pomona, and I, I held up to my, my word, and that's what happened. Okay, so I'm going to dig a little deeper. How do we get Angie to be a champion next season? <laughs> um, what, we, well, what we do is I get to run that motor all year, and we have new <laughs> stuff, too, that we're developing that's probably going to be better also. Yep. Ooh. Yep, that's the plan. Off season, huh? Yes. Let me let me jump in here real quick. Matt and Angie Smith, Matt, a six-time champion, and Angie – winner at Pomona, the, uh, I been doing some of the research says that you build some of the motors, Angie, does that mean that maybe you could have built the motor that he won the championship with that he's bragging about? He gave to you so you could win <laughs> at Pomona. Yeah. Well, typically in the shop, I mean, I, he helps me do the bottom ends. We do the bottom ends together. He puts the rods on the crank and things like that. But everything after the rods are assembled and the pistons are in, I assemble everything else. So it's a joint effort on the V-Twin side for sure. I don't touch any of the Suzuki stuff just because I've been doing the V-Twin stuff so long. And I'm going to let them figure the, the Suzuki stuff out and then I'll help later on. But right now, you know, the V-Twin stuff is my forte. And, you know, I do a lot of work in the shop. A lot of people don't believe that or know that. But I get my hands dirty and I'm in that shop every day working. You hear that, Freak Nation? She didn't answer the question. She could have built that motor that Matt I won the championship I contributed. With. How about that? All right. That's that's more than fair. I love that. Uh, because it, in some shops, it, you don't know who builds the stuff. It just goes on the shelf, and you reach up and grab one and plug it in. So, uh, Matt, do you when you rev that thing up, can you tell who built the motor? 
and whether or not it's going to be a, a winning motor? No, you know, Angie touches, let me put it this way. She touches every V-twin motor when it goes together. Like she said, we, uh, we do the bottom ends together, and then I, uh, I assemble the heads, and then I let her bolt everything else together. You know, and she puts the cams in, the, the head on, and, and the valve train. She adjusts the valves. So from that point, after that, it goes on the dyno. She puts it all on the dyno herself, and then I get to run them. And uh, I get to play and, and pull the trigger on the dyno and see if it's got more power or less power. When it has less power, I say, man, what'd you do? <laughs> <laughs> but then when it has more power, she goes, oh, I want that motor. <laughs> yeah. so, so that's that's kind of the way it goes. But all in all, we have really good stuff, and, and she does a tremendous amount in the shop. Hey, moms, check this out. This is how we justify ice cream with the kids. You got to put them to work. They got to earn it. Stella, which Lucas Slickmas product are you working with? I'm working with the tire and trim shine, which is amazing. Watch. Oh, yeah. Work it, girl. Henley, on the inside, which Lucas Slickmas product are you using? I'm using the interior detailer. Watch. Wow. Oh, so easy. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Now, don't tell them but mom's got speed wax. Yep, that's the easiest one of them all, but they don't need to know that. Mom needs her ice cream too, so let's get to work. We got this. Yep, Lucas works. So you did, both of you did a lot of celebrating in Pomona where you won the championship, Matt, your sixth, and Angie won the event. You live in North Carolina. Does that 3,000 mile separation get in the way of a celebration or uh, do you have to wait till you get home or do you let it all out there in Pomona before you uh, get back in the holler and go back home? Well, we had a, um, we always have a formal banquet the next day and we had it this year in Temecula, California at a nice resort, Pachang uh, resort. It was fabulous. We all got dressed up. The boys were in Texas and I was in a formal gown. So we, that was our day to play and shine and be superstars. And then we got in the truck and headed back east for 41 hours in the truck. And I will say, winning the race and winning the championship, it's a lot better drive for 41 hours than if we both would have went there and lost first round. At Pachanga, they have some pretty good music acts that appear there once in a while. Did they have any that night? Were you able to hear some music as part of the celebration? No, they didn't have anything that night. It, it, we were kind of the main thing going on there. They had all the ballrooms for us and had the after party oh, wow. and everything was focused on NHRA. They did an amazing job make, making us feel special. Wow. Congratulations. That's that's world-class cool when you get off and there's crowns and celebrations and champagne everywhere and you're at the top. That's like an inaugural ball. That's cool. Hey. Yeah. <laughs> they were dressed like it watching yep. them on social media. Holy cow. You guys look fine. Thank you, Matt, Angie Smith. What does Angie do? She goes out and wins the last NHRA pro pro stock motorcycle race. And Matt Smith shows up championship six times. I want to get back to this motor issue. It's, <laughs> it's a, it's a, and I don't want to get so off in the weeds when we're comparing our relationships, but Crasher and I, you know, it's not, it's no secret. Uh, we've been married for a number of years. We have a child. You guys have been married for a number of years. I don't know anything outside of that. Well, I might, but I'm not going to give it away. Has there ever been a time when you Dogs, guys have gone to bed, cats. lying next to each other, and Angie, you're pissed off at the guy going, <laughs> bro, I know the engine you put on my bike was six less horsepower. Was there ever <laughs> one of those arguments? Come on, Angie. It had That's to happen. Oh, yeah. Those arguments have happened. They happen when we dyno because I'm the first to say that's my motor. And he's like, no, no, no. So I'm the first to say I claim anything that's above and beyond what we've had. I claim it like the first pull. I claim it. <laughs> wow. yes. Matt, have you had an argument uh, before you closed your eyes or were you, were you afraid she might reach over and punch you when you're sleeping because you you uh, screwed her up on an engine? No, you know. She's had, <laughs> if you look back until this last motor we did, she, and she'll, she'll admit to it. She's had the best motor that's been on our dyno period for the last two years. And, um, this was just something special we put together and we finally got some new parts in, you know, because parts right now take a long time to get, especially when you make and design stuff from scratch. 
It just takes a long time. We were supposed to have numerous things of this uh, going into the countdown. We didn't get but one thing right before the Dallas race. And we were hesitant to even put it together. And I'm like, well, let's just put it together and see, you know. And it was that night before we were going to the racetrack that before we were leaving for Dallas that we dynoed and it was like, oh, wow. So I wish we had more parts, but we've got more parts now for our other motors. So uh, I'm expecting all our motors to be a lot better for next year. On the flip side of that conversation about you guys being a married couple, working together, playing together, it's got to be, re- I guess refreshing is not the word I'm looking for, comfortable when you have to deal with controversy, such as the NHRA fan base or fellow competitors. And controversy happened this year with a competitor, a couple of competitors, and even with the series that you guys can lean on each other. That has to be more comforting for you than others, I would imagine. Or am I wrong? No, you're right. You're right. Except for I did get into it a little bit with a competitor at Sonoma and uh, Matt at the time was riding his Suzuki and the competitor I got into it with was riding a Suzuki and he (laughs) said he he threw something out there and I'll tell you what he says, but I won't tell you who it was. He said, well, if you had anybody decent that could tune your clutch, then you could go 104, 103, 60 foots and you could go faster. Well, that was like sticking a dynamite in me because I blew up (laughs) and it was, there was no backing down and Matt said something and I turned around and I said, and I told him, I said, you stay out of it because you're on a Suzuki right now, because there's a big battle right now between Suzuki and V-Twins in our class. And he was running a Suzuki at the time. And I turned around and I said, you stay out of it because you're on a Suzuki right now. And I tore, tore the other guy a new one. I'll just say that. (laughs) So are are you saying that uh, Steve Johnson will not be getting a Smith's Christmas card this uh... it, it, Believe it or not, it was not Steve Johnson. What? <laughs> Breaking news. Oh, Whoa. Wow. However, back, back if you back, go back and watch the Sonoma race, they highlighted it and qualified. And that's hold all on a minute there. That Matt is just sitting there quiet and smiling. <laughs> He's felt that blow up before, haven't you? You, (laughs) You're not not talking about it much, but I'm sure somewhere in the bedroom, the living room, the shop, she's blowing up and you're saying, I'll never go down that road again. You you just don't know how how much how many times that dynamite stick goes off, you know. (laughs) Oh, come on now. You just have to learn to live with it and keep your mouth shut and go do something else. You know how you know how women are. You know how women are. Have that, Matt, than a freaking passive individual. You want someone there to kick ass when you're not able to, buddy. Yes. He's 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 telling stories now (laughs) because I, I'm a very level-headed person, but if you get me to the point now, if you push me off the cliff, just be prepared. <laughs> I want to go cliff diving with Angie. <laughs> yeah. Got to be sure there's no lightning going to strike here in a second. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's greatness, oh, man. Wow. Hey, it's Kenny Sargent, a loyal Omaha Steaks dude for years. And during the holidays for my family, I'm ordering juicy burgers, tender filet mignon, air-chilled, naturally lean chicken, and a side of stuffed baked potatoes from omahasteaks.com. And the great news? I get to taste all of it when I go home for the holidays. It's pretty wise, huh? Well, when you use the code FREAKS right now with your order at omahasteaks.com, you're going to grab an additional 40 bucks off your order. And that's on top of an already 50% off site-wide at omahasteaks.com. Code FREAKS, and you'll get 40 bucks off. The tastiest steaks, pork, chicken, and easy-to-prepare comfort meals, they're waiting for you at omahasteaks.com. Take the guesswork out of gifting. Order now with code FREAKS for 40 bucks off. And beat the rush because some things never change, right? Omaha Steaks, the world's best beef. Every steak and every entree comes with 100% money-back guarantee. Order today, beat the shipping rush, and use promo code FREAKS at checkout for 40 bucks off at omahasteaks.com. Minimum order may be required. Six-time NHRA Pro Stock Motorcycle Champion uh, joining us here in the Freak Nation with his winning wife, Angie Smith, here in the Freak Nation. And there was news made, actually, earlier this week that uh, Andretti Autosports, they're bringing on board a female open-wheel driver into their, what do they call, feeder system, the next next NXT system. And... uh, 
we've been doing Speed Freaks for 22 years, and Angie, I can't say it enough that Statman, that guy in the lower right-hand corner, has been such a proponent for the diversity. The hell is that? <laughs> are you in the air? Are you in the shop uh, for a, 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 a proponent for NHRA and the diversity that it brings? That it's as if no other motorsports can grasp what the NHRA has done from, especially uh, in the bike class. Kenny, yes, especially mm-hmm. in the bike class. From uh, African Americans, Latinos, females, up and down their uh, different divisions. Uh, it's just awesome, Angie, to see you continue to kick ass, uh, regardless of. Uh, who you are, what you are, but how well you can do it on a bike. Well, thank you. I mean, I try to do my best out there. You know, I've, you know, I've had my years of struggle, you know, uh, in my past years, I've struggled and I've had to really learn to ride the motorcycle. And I've actually had to learn to take constructive criticism and I've had to learn to listen to Matt and take all the knowledge that he has (laughs) and, you know, apply it, even though sometimes, you know, I was hard headed at first. I didn't want, I wanted to do it my way and he wanted me to do it his way. And now I listen for the most part to him and he's made me a much better rider and he's a good teacher. So. Wow. Holy smokes. Gosh, if we're going to play confessions here, I guess, yeah, I could say I learned from Kenny too. I mean, yeah. you get- <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Mark that stat, man. The 114. <laughs> The afternoon, <laughs> Crasher paid a compliment. Is that but is, is that is that true though, Matt? Uh, your personalities at times, for, or maybe for the most part, you seem much more lower key. And I'm not knocking you, Angie. I, I appreciate a woman that is not afraid to get after it. We got fire. That's, yeah, that's what um, it is. Is yeah. that is that does that work in your favor, Matt? That you, your personalities are a little bit different. Yeah, sometimes. I mean, you know, I, I did turn Tell fifty. Truth, Smitty. I, I I did turn fifty out of Pomona, so uh, I am getting older. So I think when you get older, you wise up more, uh, and you learn to pick your battles. Uh, and and that's kind of what I'm I'm doing more. When she maybe when she gets fifty, she'll learn to pick her battles a little bit better. Um, but right now, she's still a a young pup, and uh, she's going to continue to be uh, aggressive. I think. <laughs> it's a good yes. thing you two are in separate fields. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is wonderful. I'm, I'm going to I'm going to step on a I'm going to step on a landmine here, Angie. The uh, the hair has changed several times through the years, from blonde to bl- uh, the the blonde and I guess black, and then the, now I see some red in there. Is that does that does that correspond to what your feelings are at the time? You just want it to be whatever you want it to be? Well, no, actually, my hair has been the same like this for the last 10 years. But sometimes it's brighter and sometimes it's not. And it's just one of those things. I like being a little different. So I got a little black and a little blonde and some pink. I like the pink in it. And I did change it one time and everybody was like, where's your pink hair? Like, why did you take it out? And it was the biggest deal in the world that I took the pink out of my hair. So I have to roll with it right now. Matt, do you have any say in uh, what your wife looks like? Or do you just roll with the punch? <laughs> no, she she gets to do what she wants. Because uh, I've told her I wanted to see her if she's going to change something to go all black one time. But she's <laughs> like, no, I'm not doing that. So uh, I just let her do what she wants. That's That's her deal. And uh, I just keep getting grayer. I can't. I can't help that. But you know, it just it keeps happening. As long as he's building you championship engines, brother, you you stick with that. <laughs> yep, yep, right. you're right. Statman, step on Statman, lay in line, landmines, man. Okay, and look at Ang- look at their tree, and look at Angie's hair. They've got perfect. pink. Look at that pink balls, uh, vanilla balls ornaments. I should say you need some green in your hair. Then see there. That's like teal. Like that. Purple. Green. Green's yeah. bad luck at the racetrack, they say. Ooh. Oh, come on. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, that's, the, that's the, what the green along with. Well, they said that when Daryl Waltrip showed up with, uh, uh, and that he blew that away when he won championships. Although I am going to tell a story. I'm going to take some time. When they, when they first had the International Race of Champions, when they had the Camaros, they one up. They took one of them to the racetrack that was painted green, and the NASCAR drivers wouldn't drive the car. 
And uh, so they painted it black, and Bobby Allison got in it and won every race that year. <laughs> <laughs> that sort of tempered that green quite a bit. Whatever you do, General Tire delivers. Matt, Angie Smith, NHR. Well, hold on a second, Kenny. Behind you, Matt, you've got a couple of pictures, and I think I see pink instead of red, meaning the pink Denzo bike versus the red Denzo bike. Is that what I'm seeing right behind you? It's a picture um, of winning. I think it's, it's a picture from Vegas. Yeah. That's that not it? It is right there below it. <laughs> Aha! There it is. Yep. Yeah. Love it. All right. So pink power. There it is. That's right. Yep. She has the pink bike, and I have the red bike. Hey, go back on to that picture. Here's okay. something that, that that some some folks don't understand or don't follow um, drag racing. Uh, explain to the Freak Nation, if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook Live, explain to the Freak Nation what that cord is connected to your arm, Angie Smith. Um, that is our keel cord. So we have to hook that up before we even start the motorcycle, and that is hooked to our ignition. If we fall off the motorcycle, which that's never the plan, it automatically shuts everything off, the ignition system, the fuel pump, and everything. Holy smokes. So similar, I guess, to a jet ski. Yes. Yes, very, but very similar. Identical to a jet ski. Okay. It's the same, same tether as a jet ski would have. Now, just looking at that picture again, and of course, I guess for everybody listening and not watching us, you've got this massive machine between your legs, no seat belts, no roll cage, no Hans device. Is it harder for you guys? Is it harder for ladies to manhandle that thing and get it, especially when it's squirrely across that finish line versus the guys? Is there a disadvantage like some people want to lead on to believe? A lot of people think it's an advantage for the girls because we're smaller and we can put the weight where we want. However, that portion of it is true. You know, we are smaller. We can put the weight where it works better on the bike, but you have to find that happy medium. So that takes time. And But the second part of that is it is harder for us because I don't know if... You know, when people follow me on social media, they're like, gosh, you know, you go to the gym all the time. Like you go six (laughs) days a week. To ride a 640 pound motorcycle and to be able to make runs and to correct it if it gets out of the groove, I have to go to the gym every day. There was a time where I was, what did I weigh, Matt? 112 pounds, 115 pounds? Yeah. Um, And I couldn't control the motorcycle. And he said, well, one of two things is going to happen. Either you're going to quit racing or you're going to gain some upper body strength. So I went to the gym and here we are. Whoa. Oh, whoa. And that was how many years ago, approximately? About four. No, 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 no. It was more than that. It was like seven, seven or eight. But you have been consistent. I mean, I've seen it following you on social media. You have been consistent on upper body, full body workouts mm. for that yeah. many years. Wow. Uh, he'll tell you. What time do I yeah. get up every morning? Yeah, she gets up at five o'clock, 4.30, and she's at the gym thing at 6.30 every morning. You and don't follow no, I don't. I don't go. Um, I'm sleepy. I, I take care of the babies, which is our three dogs. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you That's go. What it says. <laughs> That's basically taking them for a walk. I want to see you bench press, Matt Smith. <laughs> right. Well, you know, I can probably it, bench press what he, but he, what he bench presses. But you know, <laughs> it's it's more common. I mean, it's everybody knows that a guy has more strength than a, a female does. So. The females have to work out a little bit more to control these motorcycles, especially at the speeds that we're going now. Ten years ago, when he's only going 190 mile an hour, probably a little different. But when you're going over 200, I mean, there's a big difference between the 195 and 200 mark. Really? Yeah. That's a big statement right there. So, yes. and it is basically in and out of control. Is that the big difference? Yeah, it's just you know the bikes are moving a lot quicker. Um, it's the speeds up top. Um, you have to correct them 
quicker now or they get more out of control the faster you go. It's like anything. I mean, the faster you go and you get out of shape, it's it's out of control quicker. If you go slow and you try to spin, you can you can catch it, you know, quick. And it doesn't same thing. It just multiplies by 30 mile an hour to 200 mile an hour. You know, go out in the parking lot, do a donut or get sideways. You can control that pretty quick at 15, 20 mile an hour. You do that at 70, 80, you're going to spin totally around and just, you know, wipe out some stuff. So multiply that to 200. It's just that much quicker. Now, Matt, I had a funny car driver tell me once that the front end is up off the ground. So, so it's off the ground so lightly that they have to steer against the brake in the grandstand because the crosswind will blow them off the track. Now, the bikes, I can imagine there's something similar to that happening. At least it looks like it when you look at the replay, that that front end is barely on the ground. Is that the, uh, is that the same thing happening there? Yeah, you know, the bikes are really, we get out of shape pretty bad when there's a direct side wind. Any kind of side wind that's 10 mile an hour or more mm-hmm. direct sideways, whether it's left or right, the bikes struggle because it's just, we have full fairings on the bikes and it just pushes the bike over and you can't control it. It's just, you're out of control at that point. Um, our front tires, the V-twins especially, they will pick the tire up about every gear. And sometimes if it's a track's got a couple little bumps, you'll see it toting the tire through the gears, you know, it, even right there at the finish line. Um, it's just, it's the power we're making, how fast we're going. And any kind of air gets underneath of it a little bit, it just tries to pick the bike up even more. I mean, we almost need to put some wind deflectors on it and put some wings on it to help get more downforce on the front of the bike, you know, mm-hmm. at the speeds that we're going. You know, you see it in the Moto GP, they're adding these little front wings to the to the bikes now. Um, that's kind of what's going on with our bike, you know. Take for, take for instance, you're going down the highway, stick your arm at it at 50 mm-hmm. mile an hour, you know, and do it like a plane like this, you know. You'll feel that wind. Then do it at 100, 200 mile an hour like we're doing. It's it'll take your hand backwards big, big time. And that's what's going on. We just, the faster we go, we're losing, uh, you know, front downforce on the b- motorcycles. I like the way you put that. The bike struggles that, mm-hmm. that just stuck in my mind. You're struggling on that bike, dude, with that horsepower that Angie makes for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> in those Lucas oil colors, Matt and Angie Smith joining us here in the freak nation and curious on this, we'll end it with this conversation. Angie, you've got Angel Sampe, you have Brittany Force, you have Erica Enders, you have yourself winning races. And Karen Stouffer. all Many women winning races in the respective divisions. And, and I know this for a fact that like funny cars stay over here, top fuelers stay over here, bikes stay over here, pro stocks. Stay. Is, there, is there a different relationship between the women in drag racing, Angie, than any other type of relationship? Or do you just basically stay in your lane? Pardon the pun. Yeah, for sure. I'm very close friends with Erica, Erica mm-hmm. Enders, and she's a five-time champ. She's been a mentor, and, um, you know, me and her have really gotten close, and, you know, I was I was a kind of a wreck in Pomona on Sunday just because I was really focused on Matt winning his sixth championship, and I just didn't want anything stupid to go wrong, you know, a parts failure or things like that, and I was really focused on that. And, you know, and she come up and she had a conversation with me and she was like, you know, you got to focus on you. You can't control all that other stuff. And she goes, you got to believe in yourself and you got to do this. Because, I I mean, like like I said, I was a nervous wreck for him, not for me. And I wasn't even focusing on me racing. I was focusing on him. And um, and every round she was up there in my ear going, you got to believe this. You got it. You got this. You can do this. Just believe in it. And she was my motivational speech on Pomona and like me and her have become really close friends. You know, I'm me and Alexis have hung out, you know, and me and Karen and, you know, me and Karen have a great relationship and, you know, all the, all the girls, we kind of are a close knit group of girls. And when we're together, then we have a good time. But, you know, when we're at the racetrack, you know, I have obligations to my team and they have obligations to their team. So, you know, you might not see us together a lot at the track, but we do have relationships outside of the racetrack. Copy that. Copy that. Her name, Angie Smith, again, wins Pomona. Her husband, Matt Smith, wins a sixth championship, again, flying those Lucas Oil colors. 
NHRA Pro Stock Bikers here in the Freak Nation. Happy holidays to you guys, uh, and Happy New Year. Ah, how long do you guys go oh, saying Happy go. New Year next year? Do you go through the end of January, February? How long do you carry that? I say yeah. that's just a January thing. Yeah, I don't care, but a couple of days after the New Year's, you know. Um, <laughs> After that, you know, it's hard enough to get, it's going to be 2023, correct? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but if you don't see somebody at all in a new year until, let's say, Valentine's Day, do you say happy? No. New- no. Okay, good. No. Okay. <laughs> it's, 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 Jenny, see? It's, a, it's always an argument here in the Freak Nation. <laughs> hey, guys. The verdict. <laughs> yes. uh, thank you both oh, wait, for doing Oh, hold on real quick, Matt. What? I got my vintage 72, you and I, babe. Oh, yeah. Oh! Vintage the year, yeah, the year I was born. <laughs> yeah. Is that the year you were born too? Yep, I'm October. You're November, so I guess I'm a month older than you, huh? Yep, you sure. Are. We got this. Fifties good, this. man. Forties and fifties, it's all good. That's right. Stat man, you remember seventy two? Oh, don't don't, don't go there. Go on, let's don't. Uh-uh. <laughs> let's let's not worry about that. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, thank you for doing this. Thank, thank you. Thank y'all for having us.